Thank you, everybody, for making the time, for coming together today for a, a really, really special webinar. I'm Max Flöckner, and I'm trying today not to speak too fast and also not too much because we have translators and we have two absolute amazing people on this call who we want to tap into their brains and, of course, into their hearts and souls and absorb mm -hmm. as much knowledge as we possibly can today. In I'm excited to announce that we have the founder of Healy himself, Marco Schmieke, on the call. And I believe everybody on this call does know Mr. Marco Schmieke um, for the tremendous things he has curated for, meanwhile, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. And it's been, uh, for many of us, a mystery, for many of us, magic, for many of us, meanwhile, also science, which it is. Um, and on the other side, we have also another amazing guest here, my good, good friend. And uh, meanwhile, you know, an expert of all the questions I want to go to if it's about science. Um, his name is Dr. Alberto Garoli. So uh, Dr. Garoli is a medical doctor and he's an expert in traditional Chinese medicine. He is an expert in he's a researcher. He's an international lecturer. Um, so he's an absolute amazing guy, and I thought it might be a great idea to bring those two geniuses here together on a call and absorb as much knowledge as possible from them. <clears throat> so Marco Schmieke, of course, he has created uh, something absolutely incredible. And maybe if I may, Marcus, I, I'm, I'm using uh, a little bit time of introducing you. Um, I mean, you completely with your invention changed uh, my life, and I know not only my life, but uh, meanwhile, tens of thousands of people's life. Actually, we have hundreds of thousands of Healy's distributed in this world. And in the beginning, it seems to be like uh, an amazing portable device, which uh, makes you feel like a little tingling. You know, there's something happening in your body. And it's a, it's a funny experience. And suddenly, uh, we have these absolute tremendous, most beautiful effects. And more and more people, by using this device, start understanding that they are actually not only a body, but there is a whole energy field around us. And obviously the whole knowledge from this one comes from a way, way, way more ancient time, way, way, way before we ever lived. So it feels like it's a reflection of all these times coming again and again and again. And today is the first time in history where we can see this in technology. So um, I started my journey three and a half years ago to really understand and really figuring out more. And I'm really probably just in the beginning, scratching the surface of what's possible with this technology um, with through meditation, through really uh, mindfulness work, through awareness. Um, I'm feeling I become more aware, become more the master of my senses by working with energy and especially through this technology. So this is somewhat of a technology and um, maybe Marcus, you can help me a little bit on uh, going a little bit way deeper than I could ever describe it. But what it is and what it seems to be, it seems to be an interface between the information field and between our human bodies. It seems to be something that can understand and analyze frequencies that are really useful, that are really basically beneficial for us in the state. So maybe you can give us, and thank you so much for being here, a little bit of an idea of what actually is the information field? What are we doing when we're using this device? What is happening when we use an aura analysis, when we have databases of Buffalo remedies? I'm not asking you too many questions at the same time because I think you're busy explaining the information field. So first of all, thank you so much for being here and maybe word to you, Marcus. <laughs> Max, it's, it's like always when, when we met first time in Bangkok, um, I already saw that you asked more questions than everyone else. And I, I like this uh, aspect of you. And I saw that you're really serious because in the beginning, I saw people who are meeting in this network marketing industry, they are really superficial. But um, yeah, this, this kind of questions, this kind of deep questions are really what I really like. And I, I love to talk about exactly what you're asking. What is the information field? I mean, I, I think my life journey is about finding this out and finding deeper and deeper aspects of the information field. Healy, I have one here. Someone gave me this beautiful case for putting it around the neck so I can my, have my Healy always with me. Healy is actually meant to, as you said, to connect us to the information field. And this connection to the information field is nothing else than a connection to ourself because I consider the information field to be 
um, the self communicating through to our manifest existence. Because our body in itself, and this I believe very strongly, our body in itself, just for itself, just with its, with its material composition, won't be able to live. The life force um, is deeply behind its, the consciousness. And the consciousness of the self communicates to our body through the information field. And the information field communicates to our body through frequencies. So that's the line. It's the self. It's the consciousness. It's the information field. It's the frequencies. And the frequencies, they are creating within our the living matter of our organism, they create coherence. They make all the different atoms and molecules and compositions and oscillators, which forms this energetic expression of life energy, our body. They make it coherent. So whenever some coherence shows up in the EEG or in in the biophotons emission of our body, we know there is a life force, there's the original spirit, which uh, is the origin of life, is communicating. So it's a whole cascade and information field is a, yeah, what's the information field exactly? That's very difficult to say in an objective language. Uh, I see Alberto laughing, uh, smiling uh, about it because and there's a reason for it. In the way how we speak, our language is objectified, it means there's someone who speaks about something. So there is a subject object relationship. And our whole way of thinking, starting, not starting, but in Aristotle put it in a very clear, um, in a very clear logic, is based on this um, separating reality in the subjective, which is consciousness, and the objective, which is the material. And information field is exactly the in-between. If you divide reality into a dualistic, uh, into something dualistic, if you divide reality into consciousness and matter, into the subject and the object, something gets lost. And that's the information field. René Descartes, in his meditations, he says this very clearly. He says, there is the res extensa. This is everything which you find in space. This is matter. This is energy. Also energy, it's matter, it's the same. And there is the res cogitans. This is the, the subject which thinks, which perceives. And he says there's nothing else. Either it's res cogitans or it's res extensa. And I say, no, there's something third, what Aristoteles calls the tertium mandatur. He Actually, Aristoteles says the third doesn't exist, but it's the information field. And therefore, the information field escapes science because science is purely based on objectifying language. It's a purely objectifying process which wants to establish a purely objective truth independent of the subject. And if you, if you create a description of reality which erases the subject, you're losing not only half of reality, but you, you lose life itself. You lose consciousness, you lose the subjective aspect. And life is whenever the object and the subjective comes together. And therefore, understanding the information field as the in-between is so is so very much important. So that's, that's really, I, for me, my life mission to develop a new science which can also des describe this in-between, what we call life energy or what in, in India it's called prana, in China it's called chi. So the old cultures, they had ways to describe it. And now we have a new emerging science, which again describes this phenomenon or which describes what happens if the soul throws its shadow on matter. I think this is a beautiful picture. Life energy is the shadow of the soul on the material. So whenever we see coherence coming up, we, we, we see that the soul is throwing its reflection, its shadow on the material. And I think that's a very beautiful picture. Before I give it to Alberto, and I, I really want actually to have you guys have a conversation here in the 
the, the, the name of this call is really science meets spirituality. And I know uh, these fundamental ideas and concepts, they're coming really from a spiritual background. However, today we have the ability with technology, of course, and with the things what we are doing to prove in science that these things are possible. Oftentimes, and if I understand it correctly, in science, we're using just different words, different terminologies that are basically explaining the same thing. So now I'm hearing the word life energy. And I remember like our body is an electric body. So basically we have a micro voltage in all of our cells. If you combine all our 30, 60 trillion cells, whatever it is, we are actually a very, very powerful being. And this word life energy starts making a lot of sense right now. So maybe just to give it to you, Alberto, uh, now, and, and once again, guys, I, I, I can't wait for you guys to meet him because my friend, Dr. Alberto, is a real genius and the way he is putting things together is uh, from a different level. So maybe just give it up to you. And I see you're already sharing some slides. Uh, that's amazing. So you illustrate something for us. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you, Max. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Marcus. In such a short time, you put it perfectly. The idea of uh, the shadow that gives the uh, space for energy to express is wonderful. I loved it. Like, I, I love everything that Marcus says because he's very original. Uh, for people like me that try to uh, create a bridge between uh, bioenergy and medicine uh, that we do every day and uh, the parameters that we analyze in people, uh, it was a wonderful experience. So I, uh, I got to, to meet Marcus um, last year and I had this wonderful opportunity to see how serious he is about his mission. Uh, many companies produce devices, but um, it's the first time that I actually meet somebody that is really truthful to the goal. And the goal is actually to create this paradigm and Marcus is all about it. Marcus is all about finding the truth about the information field. And this is what I love about, about what he does. And so uh, he defined his uh, objective subjective dichotomy difference. And I just wanted to show you this slide here because science and spirituality are not the opposite. Uh, they are a perfect match. Uh, the opposite that repulse each other is sometimes the reason why the two cannot mix, but we can use it. So we can actually use both to integrate the perfect paradigm, which is a system approach and a focus approach instead of non-focused. And uh, we can use objective and subjective. And actually, this is what uh, Marcus's invention does. Uh, it's a device and uses energy, of course, because you use electrical energy, but it's also fishing for information in a way that is uh, user dependent. So very important. And there's also another important part. Marcus was describing the body and we analyze the body whenever we do a blood test, for instance, we analyze part of the body, the blood. But if we do a, a full analysis of what the body is, we find approximately 28 elements on the periodic table, of which uh, only few are major elements. So you have oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen that build the amino acids, the proteins of which we're made, but again, the more we look into these elements, the less we find the life. We do have oxygen, we do have nitrogen, but what is giving the life and the intelligence to this body that is uh, alive and follows the cycles, is awake and it goes to sleep, has energy and then goes into a different phase? And what are the emotions that we experience? So all this parts uh, has a very wide uh, field for improvement. We need to know more about it. Uh, Marcus quoted Aristoteles. Aristoteles was the inspirator of ancient science. It was the inspirator of Avicenna and uh, Hippocratic medicine throughout the last 2000 years. And Aristoteles, that was basically an observer, a very wise philosopher, uh, said that uh, the inhabitant of the body has a goal. And we see the goal in terms of how much energy produces, what kind of energy produces. For instance, when we do an EEG, electroencephalography, and we see that when a person is very relaxed and has no particular intent, no particular goal, 
they are in a state of presence, they release a specific frequency at around 10 hertz, 10 cycles per second. And as they go into the drowsy state, they go into the state of theta, they uh, have visualization, they see things. So their subjective point of view changes according to the frequency their brain is producing. So we have learned that there is an internal ensemble of energy in the body and energy is very strong in the heart. For instance, when you do an ECG, you're measuring the power of the heart in watts. So it's a, like an electric, an electrical engine. And of course, the body needs electrolytes uh, to function. Water, we're mainly composed of water, of which oxygen is part of. But then electricity is what makes a difference. And so not only general electricity, like direct uh, uh, current, like DC. Uh, but also alternated cycles. And these are frequencies. Different frequencies create different uh, synchronizations, almost like when you're synchronizing or uh, adjusting to a tune. So we have some technology that will allow us in the future to understand how we tune into something that um, Marcus has created in a beautiful way through the research of a, scient a Russian scientist, uh, Nikolai Kozarev. And that was a wonderful intuition, Marcus. <laughs> I loved it. So basically, if that field exists, it, we know that we get information of our blueprint, our uh, cellular intelligence. Whatever plan our body has is a plan that creates coherence. The organ has a shape, and that shape is uh, the blueprint for which we will use certain materials. If you look at the slide here, you have bricks, you have copper, you have cement, you have cotton. They're all materials. But the total plan that you need to use to create the specific shape is the information field. And then you will use cement, you will use bricks, you will use uh, cotton for the sofa, you will use copper for the wires. All these materials will have a goal. So the goal of the wall is, for instance, to insulate. The goal of the roof is to create a protection. The goal of the windows is to create a protection that you can also see through. So the materials, remember this, the materials in the body always have a goal. And the goal is the telos. This is why we say entelechy, because the goal of any cell and any organ is specific. Like the, the goal of the liver is different from the goal of the kidney. The goal of the heart is different from the goal of the brain, but they're all synthesized together as a harmonic unit. Like a plan here, you see the energy paradigm is what we need to understand how we go from a plan, a blueprint, to assembled object, living object, which is our body. And then we can understand it through an energy paradigm. Now, the energy paradigm comes before the information field because we can still measure it properly. We can put EEGs in our brain and see what kind of frequency the brain is producing while we're listening to music or while we are computing a mathematical formula or while we're dreaming. All this are subjective states. So if you are very relaxed, you're producing a certain frequency, which is made of electrical impulses uh, discovered by Hans Berger, a, a German scientist that uh, had an intuition about it. So he wanted to see what was happening in the brain and he discovered that. So he discovered something really important. And then we know how to use it today. We know how to transform it into good information. So yes, this is um, a, a very succinct definition, but what we want is to understand how information becomes form because the form is then uh, kept throughout. For instance, the cell, the shape of the cell is also related to the function of the cell. You have a membrane, you have a nucleus. If the membrane loses potential, then you also lose the function. You also lose the activity. So every organ requires information and energy. Uh, one last slide that uh, gives some, some uh, uh, more clarity on this. Uh, again, we have microcurrents and biogenic rays, which is basically infrared. 
uh, our body produces heat and heat is the result of metabolism. But when the body is too cold, uh, there will be a change in energy patterns in the body as well. So for instance, accelerated frequencies. And so the two go together. We need to be to produce the right warmth and the right microcurrents. We can also study microcurrents in the body and we also study which parts produces which type of electricity. And we have a bioelectric code, which we understand to be correlated to how organs are formed from the embryo, for instance, to the full-blown organism. You have cell aggregates of cells, then the embryo, and then the embryo develops into a developed human. So electricity, microelectricity guides morphogenesis. When electricity is produced by organisms, by organs or cells, it is called bioelectricity. When it is producing life, it's called biogenic. Super. Um, Marcus, are you still here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, Marcus, the question is really, uh, I, I, I want to know, like, what made you um, create the Healy, like, with the frequencies that is basically able to tap into the information field and select the right frequencies that are there for us? How do we, for example, know? I mean, Alberto, sometimes in our discussions, he described there is a certain frequency for our brain waves. There are certain frequencies in our body and our, and our organs. Like when we look into the information field, um, what makes those frequencies or what, how can we describe that these frequencies that are selected by the Healy are better for us than, for example, like a normal frequency that is, that is, you know, that is known for a brain wave or something like this? How do we, how can we define that from the information field, the frequency is um, that it, it is actually what we are needing right now. Right, of course, uh, um, there are two ways how we use frequencies in Healy. One way is that we um, allow the Healy to analyze frequencies from the complete spectrum from 0 0.1 hertz to 1 megahertz. This is the range which we are using. This is 10 million frequencies. So it's basically all the frequencies which are there in this pool between zero and <clears throat> one million hertz. And then um, we analyze which frequency pattern. It's not, not a single frequency, but it's always a pattern of frequencies. It's a sequence of frequencies which relate to each other and they manifest a meaning in their relation to each other. For example, if I'm using a word like the word word, W-O-R-D. The, the meaning is not in the letters. It's not in the W. It's not, not that the W or the O or the R or the D, they have a specific meaning. But in this unique combination word, it has a meaning. But the word word can have, again, different meanings. For example, it's a program in which I can write my letters. It can mean a word in a sentence. Uh, it can have, uh, give me back my... It can have so many different, so the context, and it's the same with frequencies. A frequency by itself might not have a specific meaning, but if it comes in a certain sequence of frequencies, if it comes in a certain, um, in a certain um, relation to other frequencies, a meaning, an underlying meaning um, gets manifest. It's the implicate which, be which becomes explicate. What we see on the material level in forms of molecules and um, you know the, the matter of our bodies, that's the explicate, but there's an impl implicate dimension behind. There's a level of meaning behind, which um, Alberto called entelechia. That's a very good thing. This is really like the potential which is within us as a living entity. We can call it the self. It's whatever belongs to me. And this can manifest through such manifestation of meaning. I have a nice book here. I got it today, uh, Unfolding Meaning from David Bohm. He's, he, he was a real genius and he described this implicate order, which we call the information field. And the process of letting the information field select frequencies and we experiencing them by having the frequencies flow through our body. It's nothing else than what this book says. It's the unfolding of meaning because we are meaning. 
we are spirit and this spirit wants to unfold and this unfoldment of spirit or meaning is what we call life. So we have a lot of blockades that we don't allow this flow of meaning to be free. It's many assumptions which we have, it's many traumata and many things which we, uh, which we take over from the society, from school, there are so many blocks. And it's all about unblocking so that the meaning that the spirit can slowly, uh, can, can um, freely flow through our expressions of life. And this is really why we um, experience these frequencies through the information field. Remember, the information field is the self and the consciousness communicating through it, through the frequencies. It's a free, it's a free flow of spirit. Yeah. So the frequencies, the frequency range also is a bridge on which you can experience different levels and different accesses. When you are deep into delta, there is no conscious perception. So if the brain produces delta waves, which is zero five to two hertz, there is no sense of self. There's absorption, what the Indians call the samadhi, the absorption into the totality. Then as you grow up in frequencies, you start being aware of something that could be almost like an imagination, that's theta. But also the same frequencies happen to develop with our natural development as children. So a child of six months produces 99% delta waves. And as they grow up, as they reach two, three years, they start producing theta. So they move around. Theta is associated with memory of movement. So their dimension changes, their perception changes, and their imagination also changes. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting uh, part of life because they come up with uh, ideas that are very creative. So creativity, even language, perception of the self and others. And then comes the full developed brain that produces 15 to 20 hertz. And this is what we call beta or beta one, two, and three. And then we become uh, more objective and we become exteriorized. Instead of perceiving the self, we perceive something outside. It's the other side, actually. I, when I started to speak, I got so enthusiastic about this more spiritual aspect that I, I forgot how I started. I started to describe that there are two actually different ways how Healy functions. And the one mode, the mode one, call it the mode one, is to select from the whole pool of frequencies until one megahertz, starting with the low frequencies. The low frequencies are extremely important. You mentioned their uh, significance for the brain waves, but they also have, a, have an effect on the cellular level. So um, low, low frequencies are extremely important, but there is a mode two. And in the mode two, we have a whole library of frequencies. So in the mode two, each frequency has a certain meaning. And we have um, what we call the gold frequencies, which have been originally developed by Nuno Nina, the standard 44,000 frequencies, where each frequency has a specific meaning but still, through the information field, we are selecting um, a sequence or a certain set of these frequencies. So these are two different modes how, how Healy operates. And there is a third one. Um, I'm working with a Dutch scientist. His name is Hans Giesing, and he will also be there in uh, two weeks. We have a symposium with scientists, a transdisciplinary symposium at the castle uh, with a six professors of physics and but also biologists as Alberto is there from the health sector we have a professor of philosophy and one of the uh, lecturers is Hans Giesing and he developed a formula by which you can calculate coherent frequency so that's the third mode there are certain formulas by which you can create the frequencies like Alberto you um, using the frequencies of the Iron, uh, the iron cyclotron frequencies, uh, which are resonance frequencies in the um, in the magnetic field, for example, of calcium and so on. So there are certain formulas by which you can either physically or mathematically calculate coherent frequencies or resonance frequencies of certain molecules. So we are also using this. So we have a we have many sources of frequencies, and the the master discipline, of course, is then selecting the right one through the uh, quantum resonance with the information field.
which is which is kind of if you look externally it's a it's a random process but in this random quantum process like david bohm says meaning unfolds hey guys um i think this is amazing information so I want to know, like, how is it possible for us with the technology what we have today? Maybe this is a question to you, Alberto. How do we actually able to measure frequencies and measure especially frequencies in our brain, in our body, in our heart? So what are the tools that you are using in order to measure frequencies? And then the next question is, how can we now apply those frequencies with the device that uh, are basically beneficial for our emotional, mental or physical body? And have you done some testing on this? We do them all the time, uh, Mike, uh, Max, because uh, we when we do EEGs, ECGs, when we do electromyographies, we measure electricity. But we, we're not actually measuring what Marcus is talking about because this is more complex. Marcus is talking about information, and information has no weight, no energy, no mass. Uh, it informs almost like when you're sending um a telefax and then you reprint it somewhere else uh you send information somebody would print it on their paper where their ink you is sending this stream of information that has meaning and it might say to the liver uh keep building up uh the shape of the liver which requires a specific set of frequencies and i would say coordinates as well so what is important in information is space and time you're giving information of space time continuum that that will change the orientation of a cell and the activity of the cell but what what do you measure with the current tools we can make, measure um, phase angle for instance how much the body will be able to absorb energy and what is the potential of the cells how the potential of the cells is uh, free to absorb energy because if we give energy to a body that is not ready to absorb it if we give electricity to a body that is devoid of electrolytes it will not absorb it so there's this is the very basic the very very basic marcus is at a very high level and speaks about very high concepts and um, i'm introducing very low concepts of how the body is actually producing energy, uh, current, microcurrents. But the key to this is microcurrents are a language. So almost like a, a sign language or like the old telegraphs, SOS, the dot, dot line and something, cells also manifest a sort of language that is a code and it's a binary code. Uh, so we can we can read that and interpret that. The other way to read the information field comes from uh, studies that have been performed at Stanford University, uh, the research anomalies at, at Princeton, and they all use this uh, apparently random events. And this is the forte. This is what uh, Marcus has developed, and nobody else has done it. So this is the genius of it, to go and look into a different type of science. So people maybe don't realize it, but uh, the Healy is melding and going into a different level of science. People will understand this in 200 years. At the moment, they don't have even the, uh, the mind to get it, but uh, they will in the future because it's information that comes from another dimension. And this dimension is time. There, there was one author that uh, proved this, and that was Kozarev. He used gyroscopes. Very difficult to explain it simply, but there was a science to uh, test variation, micro variation in matter. And, uh, and, and we can do some of it indirectly. So we can do indirect tests on the body to see if the organ has changed. For instance, Kozarev was changing the was measuring the weight of object after they were exposed to certain conditions it, it was he used very precise scales because when you influence certain organs with information they might change their weight in terms of a, a fraction of a gram okay marcus you want to add something to this or should i ask another question oh, right. of course the the work of nikolai kozirev was a great inspiration for me developing originally time waver um 
And then after the development of time weather, of course, the development of Healy. And therefore, I'm so happy that in the Mac Healy now we have two small causative mirrors. These causative mirrors are small cylinders of um, cylindric elements of aluminum. And aluminum is a special um, material. According to causative, time propagates as flow, or I would say as waves. Therefore, I call it the time waves or the, the waves of time or the time waiver means a device which communicates through time. And um, the time flow transports the information field. This is the idea which Kosyev had. And uh, certain materials, they reflect the time flow. And aluminum, according to Kosyev, is that material which um, most effecti effectively um, reflects the flow of information, this time waves. <laughs> Therefore, in the McHealy, we place this um, physical noise generator by which we want to contact the information field in the middle of such a causative mirror, which um, creates a singularity. Because imagine if you're in the middle of such a cylinder, all the informational wave which emanate from yourself are reflected by the, um, by the cylinder back on you. And uh, today we were actually sitting on in, in our causative mirror in the castle, not in the castle, but in the new building, which we renovated next to the castle. We have a huge causative mirror of two meter size, two meter 50 high. Max maybe has seen it. I was sitting one, one can sit inside. And um, today we were really surprised because we had one of our engineers was our guest today and he get, he brought us a new development which we have had done together. It's a, it's a um, place to measure the frequency spectra of molecules according to Jacques Benveniste and Luc Montagnier and so on. And we were, were looking for a place where we don't have the 50 hertz um radiation from the electric power supply and um suddenly then uh the engineer suggested oh let's try the cognitive mirror so we went inside and we saw a perfectly shielded um place without any 50 hertz so now we we shifted all our laboratory equipment <laughs> inside this cognitive mirror it's just two meters place it's completely packed but we have a perfect place for our experiments and such a causative mirror, two of them we have inside the McKeely to uh, even tap deeper into the information field. And this causative mirror is you have one of them also in the Healy, now two in the McHealy. These are the two uh, separate frequency generator basically, and one of them you have in the Healy, right? So yeah, two, in the McHealy we have two because we're using now two different kind of diodes to. Um, physical noise generators. Uh, one is based on electrons, the other is based on infrared uh, radiation. So then if you have uh, the, the McHealy, for example, close to your body, it directly connects to the, um, the uh, infrared uh, field which the body emanates. So, so okay, to make it even ex understandable for people like me, like impossible. How, impossible. Max, impossible. impossible. I know, I know. But if you impossible. if you <laughs> if you try, if you could try, the cozy rift mirror is a vacuum, a vacuum. In such vacuum, it will define basically almost like a yes and no uh, uh, possibility generator of what frequency I'm resonating with and what not, or how would you define it in the most simple way? And maybe Alberto, you can try that after. Um <laughs> Everyone, everyone, we try one each. It's it's I, it's very simple. Let's say you have ten frequencies and you want to know which one is the best in this moment. Like say, uh, zero hertz, one hertz, not zero hertz. This would be direct current. So one hertz, two hertz, three hertz, four hertz, up to ten hertz. So you have ten frequencies, and we want to see what's the best. So we use a very simple method. Um, for the frequency one. We um, we um, see when we when we play this frequency, what is the uh, resonance change of the physical noise generator? And then we do it for two, then we do it for three, then we do it for four hertz. So for each frequency, we um, 
we collect the response from the physical noise generator, which uh, quantum entangles, according to my understanding, with the field of the body. So we are looking for the resonance and which um, frequency creates a, a more coherence, less entropy, more order, more coherence. So this goes very quick because we can check up to, I think, 1000 frequencies in a second. And in this way, we can scan much uh, uh, wide uh, bands of frequencies. Alberto? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> imagine somebody is called John, uh, and it, it, there's a crowd of people, and uh, everybody has a name, only one name. They can only have one name. And you're calling, you're calling Paul, and Paul doesn't respond. Then you're calling uh, Stefan and Stefan doesn't respond. Then you say John and John says, it's me. So you have an echo, you have a response because there's a resonance. There is the recognition of the first signal. In that pool of 100 people, one says, it's me. And there's energy coming out. So you notice John stands out because you just called him. Yeah, and, it's, it's, uh, this, it's, been, it's based on the Princeton. You have already mentioned the Princeton uh, engineering anomaly uh, institute research institute which was founded by uh, Bob John and Brenda Dunn who who have Brenda Dunn just passed away some time ago yeah. and um, Roger Nelson was the academic director of this and he's still active in his global consciousness project and this was based in the basement of the Princeton University um the the laboratory was which they did and they 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 could uh, prove over more than i think two decades of uh research which they did that this physical random generators that they actually entangle with individual minds and as roger nelson showed with even with the global mind so there's the entanglement between um, physical random processes, and that's really important. These physical random processes, they are based on quantum events. And quantum events, I see as a gate to the other world. Whenever something so-called happens randomly in the quantum world, there is a bit of information download, downloading from the unmanifest or from the implicate. And that's it, that's the key. We use a quantum processes which appear random, but they do nothing else than unfolding meaning. That's the yeah. idea. This is what David Bohm said. The implicate manifests yeah. through the quantum processes into the, into the explicate. And that's so, when we are communicating with the information field. This kind of quantum processes, random processes, happen every day, every moment, billions of times within our brain, which in each cell. And we are just isolating one of them and downloading bits of information to pick the right frequencies. Nothing else. So the yes, I I just add an experiment that was done trying to express explain this explicate implicate order. They took a cylinder and they put some uh, glycerin and then a handle to mix. Then they put a drop of ink in the glycerin. The glycerin is sort of a semi-fluid um, continuum. Then as they turned, and as they turn in one direction, the drop of ink disappeared. It was distributed, but you couldn't see it with your bare eye. It was redistributed. Now, as you turn on the opposite direction, so if the first one was clockwise, you go anti-clockwise, you were able to reform the drop of ink. This is what happens with fragmentation or uh, reconstruction of information. The ancient, even Taletes, 2000 years ago, called it solva and coagula, which means basically fragmentation and reconstruction. Every time there is a drop of ink or information, it gets deconstructed by time itself, it disappears. So when you think about something, all of a sudden it's gone, but it's not completely disappeared, it's deconstructed. And this happens in the body as well and in the brain. So if you change the direction of time, you reconstruct it and you see the, 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 the ink drop. That's, 
an example to, to, uh, to, to give an idea of how this back and forth happens. But uh, in the future, we will know more about this because there's already the studies and it's serious studies. Kozarev was an astrophysicist and his theories were never disputed, never. And uh, I, I found it very useful for medical application as well because we have something called the progression. Everything progresses, even aging is the progression. But what is lost in sickness and aging is coherence. So as long as we are able to keep coherence stable, we keep the, the organ functioning and we keep the telos, the goal of that organ, which means the organ will not get sick or old. That's very important for health and well-being because it's connected with the, the same meaning of life. So we keep the meaning of life for that particular body and organ, it stays healthy. So the goal here is coherence. And coherence, coherence basically means to get in order. So for example, if I have a dirty kitchen, it's not coherent until I clean it and it's become coherent. So the same thing is with our 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 lives, our thoughts, our uh, nutrition, our whatever whatever we consider as uh, being part of our lives. If it's not in order, it won't function as good. And what frequencies are doing, if we create the right frequencies for us and we are in alignment with the right frequencies, we're creating more order and we're creating more coherence. Is this so something like what we could say? No, order is not coherence, but of course, order and coherence are related. On the one side, you have order, and on the other side, you have disorder. And coherence is in the golden ratio between both of them, because you need both. I need to have a creative chaos around me sometimes. But then at one point, like a couple of days before, the, the, the disorder becomes too much and I started to clean my whole office and put everything back into the place where it belongs. But, you know, it, for creativity, we need this free flow of everything. And, and I, I like how David Bohm puts it. He said, coherence allows a free flow of meaning, which is a free flow of spirit. For example, let's say, you, one lives in a community, like we have around the castle, a beautiful community of people who are partially working with Time Weaver, partially working with Sealy, partially working with other projects. So it's a community of friends, but also a community in the spiritual sense. And so if such, in such a community, you have all the different opinions of society. For example, one can can discuss about corona back and forth and people are doing it and sometimes they start to quarrel but then they identify with their opinion so if you have a, if you have a group of people there are so many opinions and that's great but if people start to identify it and fight against the others then the thing becomes discoherent it uh, decoherent start and there is no there's no free flow of of meaning and spirit anymore. But if everyone understands, I have an opinion, it's one of many opinions and can disidentify with it and understand that as a group, all these different aspects must, must be there, then uh, a, flow, a free, free flow of meaning and a free flow of spirit can happen. And that's very important for a dialogue. So coherence is not only what I wanted to say, a matter of me personally, but it's my relationship to my environment and especially my relationship to the other people and how we can deal with our differences. So differences are there, but we are also one. So how do we deal with difference and difference and oneness? It's the same like how do we deal with order and disorder? It's always the golden ratio in between and allowing a free flow of, of spirit and meaning. Just um, I add something, if I may, which is also integrity. Integrity, integer in Latin means one. And uh, if you have a spoon, for instance, and the goal of the spoon is to hold the soup, if you have a hole inside the spoon, the spoon is not coherent, is not integer, is not uh, covering its function, is not doing what it's supposed to do. So anything in life, even in, in people's lives, has a goal. And uh, we have a goal, Marcus has a goal, Max has a goal, anyone has a goal. 
And if we know that goal and we follow it, we are coherent. We yeah, that's a great example. Like if we come together, now we came, Max, Alberto and me came together and we are all different, but we, we, have, we share the same spirit. And so we can create together something which, which is bigger than ourselves. Uh, or the sum of each of us. And the same happens like in Healy World. There's hundreds and now thousands and 10,000s of people come together. Everyone is contributing something and we are creating coherence. So it's, uh, and, and out of this coherence, something much, much more powerful can, can manifest. Actually, it's the original life force, the original meaning of the universe, which can manifest through a, even a small, coherent group of people and we are a big group so this original force of life this will to life the will to live and will to love as will i like live. to call it can manifest through a coherent group of people i feel like we can max a uh, confucius said you make three people agree and you change the world so <laughs> Well, I agree started. with you guys. I do agree with you guys. Look, I think we we can see it all around the world, and I think Alberto, you told me one time uh, the, the the word for that. So, for example, now information field technology. I mean, we have so many amazing characters and so many communities waking up to the fact that wow, we are actually energy, you know, and there is so much more to life than the things that we believe is true. Um, I, I I love this example. There is a video out there that shows a glass, a glass full of fleas, you know, full of these little insects and they're jumping out of this glass all the time. So then somebody comes and puts a lid on the glass and he puts that glass into a corner for three days and don't touch the glass and don't disturb the glass. Then after three days, he takes the glass back, he opens the lid. Now guess what happened? The fleas never jump out of this glass. The fleas, not even the, the kids of the fleas jump out of this glass because reality just has been formed for them. And this is exactly, I believe, what happened to humanity over the past centuries, uh, mm -hmm. you can say. And what's happening right now with we creating a new belief system for us. And we say, we see all these communities. We can see like Dr. Joe Dispenza, Mr. Marco Schmicki here on the call, Bruce Blipton, Greg Braden. We have all these names and a community of people understanding more and more about frequency and energy. So the more people understand this, the more consciousness is raising to a different level where more people can connect to. And it seems like everybody has the same idea to the same time. And it feels like ideas are more or less formed like this. Or do we even have any idea or are we just downloading information from an already existing cloud, which is consciousness? Yes. And in the, I think that in the information field, being a field, is influenced. And the more you put energy into something, the more it becomes a self-sustained living entity that then influences the people that connect with it. That's the concept that the Romans had when they, they call it the, the, the money or the living uh, fields. And they were referring, using this, praying to this to get something. So when somebody is repeating anything that you repeat, if you look in the brain, for instance, I did it with uh, pilots, Formula One pilots, when or pianists, when they start, their brain looks like a Christmas tree is very active. It's called Christmas tree constellation. But after they repeat and repeat, everything that is complicated, like driving a Formula One car or playing the piano, disappears from the brain, disappears from the cortex. It's absorbed. It goes somewhere else. And that ability is now not superficial is deep and is partially transferred somewhere else and so do every so do the cells marcus you always say if you are using healy you're doing a favor for everybody else basically you know you're connecting to a field right there and actually what we are doing is we're creating a field can you maybe get into this and, and explain what do you mean by that i believe like um we as a inhabitants of this planet we are sharing a common implicate order or we can say we are sharing a common information field and um so whatever i do on a very deep whatever i think whatever i do on a very deep level affects everyone through this information field so when i use the healing and um, through the 
frequencies which are generated. Um, it's so simple. I mean, um, we have, I'm connecting to this level on which we are all connected. That's the point. You know, every one of us has an inner space. And if I go deeper within my inner space, within my own consciousness, and then I go to my subconscious, and I go to the unconscious. And if I go deeper, um, I can see, and this is what you can experience in meditation, that the space opens up, it becomes wider. In the beginning, it might be narrow, and you are, you are um, encountering all your personal stuff, your shadow, for example, which seems to be a narrow, a narrow dark space. But if you get, go through it, the, the space opens up, it becomes wider and wider until at one point, it's not just your own individual personal space anymore, but it starts to share the space with everyone else. And this is basically the region between the individual unconscious and what Jung calls the collective unconscious, where our inner space becomes wide and it turns to become objective. It turns to become the space where we are all connected. And if you go deeper, oneness increases. So that's the level you are connecting with using information field analyzed frequencies. You're connecting to it energetically, it means you're getting energy from the level where we are all connected, where we are all one. This changes your own way of thinking. This changes your own, own way of acting. And if more and more people connect to this level, they start to act coherently. So more and more people acting coherently, bringing energy from this deeper level where we are all have the same interest. The same interest like all the plants and all the animals and all the human beings on this planet having sharing the same interest. That's very difficult, even if I have very good intention and I try to figure out what is the best I can do for everyone else on this planet. I will not find it out. My personal intelligence will not be sufficient. I try to do something good here and I do something crazy on the other side, which I couldn't understand. But if we connect to this deep coherent level, we are automatically guided. There is a all, yeah, there is a deeper intelligence. And if we are guided in our actions by this intelligence, we actually together can act in a way that we are benefiting the whole planet. We can't figure it out ourselves. We need to be connected. We need to be connected to have the intuition. Otherwise, we are part of the force which always wants to do the good and always does the bad. Opposite to Mephisto and Faust, who always <laughs> wants to do the bad and always does the good. But that's the destiny of the people who want to do good, but who are not connected. So first connect and then start to act out of this energy. And the more people do uh, start doing it, the more we benefit everyone else. Wonderful. <laughs> Hey, we managed one hour, and it was not boring. It was actually such, <laughs> it was actually such a nice, it was such a it was nice ending. It was also such a beautiful ending, guys. Yes. Um, you know, we want to keep it an hour, right? Because we have a recording that's quite, otherwise it's super long. I mean, with these two guys here, we can go on forever. I know that. We all know this. Um, so I would suggest maybe we do it again very soon. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, uh, Marcus, you, you can go on and on and your voice is certainly missed uh, by the field because you can see like there's a reason for 500 people and there were more than 500 people. I had to open another live stream on Facebook in order to satisfy more of the people. But still, we didn't get everybody to listen to you. Um, the recording will be shared, of course, um, but we, we got to do this more often for sure, you know, and we got to be more specific. We have to understand more about this amazing technology. I mean, I'm telling you, and I know... 500 people of you might resonate with me like we going out really unknown of what we have and suddenly we have experiences on our own self and on, on other people even more so and then we feel like there is something that we cannot put language on it because language might be too limited to express in words what is out there and how we explain it but we also need to understand when we look at the spectrum of frequencies our senses our vision we can only perceive a fraction of what's out there. You said gamma rays, infrared, and all these things, and all these things, just because they're not there, that doesn't, or we can't see them, not, doesn't mean that it's not, they're not there, right? 
they are there. We just can't perceive them with our senses. So that's why we go a little bit deeper or a little bit higher on a different level in a different dimension. And suddenly we can feel, we can sense, we can understand, but still having a hard time to express it in words. So I think we need to collectively walk this way and understand this journey because Guys, we opened a group on Facebook for everybody who doesn't know. It's the frequency experience. 73,000 people now on it. Thousands, if not tens of thousands of testimonials. And we always have these questions. And I see it here in the chat again. What frequency program should I use? What's better, the pink app or the blue app? I'm telling you, nothing is better and nothing is worse. It all works and it's all individually different and everybody creates an experience for themselves. But what it does, it brings us back in alignment with ourselves. It creates awareness for our own self and nobody in this world, not even Marcus or not even Dr. Alberto when he has on a table, knows you better than you know yourself. And this is really the only important message of this is create awareness. And when we're creating awareness of ourselves, we have empowerment. We have the power back of creating the lives we want. And then manifesting starts becoming an interesting thing. Magic is happening in our life. Coherence is happening. Coincidences are happening that are not coincidences anymore, but they become synchronicity, right? So now we have Dr. Alberto here on the call who can describe in a different call and the next time we let him talk about just the microcurrent and what happens if you put these microcurrent with the Healy on our little on our on our bone behind the head and what's actually happening with our heart rate variability he can talk about all these things so it's a childlike simple device that we can use and have a physical benefit on of, of it but it can go so much deeper it can go to a level that is so much higher and this is why we have marcus here explaining in his own words and trying to express something that is almost impossible to really comprehend by our own senses that we feel and see and touch it is going way beyond this. And this is really where the journey is going. So our journey is to find out as close as we can get, as how far we can go. And this is just the beginning. He is certainly not the answer of everything, but it's certainly a beautiful tool that allows us to begin a beautiful journey to go and look a little bit deeper. I think we leave it with this. I want to say thank you so much, Marcus for coming back here, for sharing your heart, your wisdom, your soul to the community. Guys, if you want him to come back again, please send a one into the chat or a heart or maybe a one and a heart. And I also want to say my deepest appreciation and gratitude for Dr. Alberto. You are a guy who just came here for the first time, but it was, won't be the last time. This guy has done amazing research. He has a crazy science background and I want him to be back here with us. And I'm really saying thank you to all of you guys for being here. It's been a beautiful call and it won't be the last call. So let's do it again. Science meets spirituality, guys. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much for everybody being here. I'm going to unmute you all now. I think if I can do it, I'm not so aware with the technical things. And you can say goodbye and thank you to Marcus if you want, <laughs> Dr. Alberto. Unmute. And thank you, Max. And thank you, Max, for making it happen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Unmute themselves. Oh, yeah, you can unmute yourself, guys, and say goodbye. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.